and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be ranking every studio series release that I have picked up throughout the entirety of 2018. I thought that this would be a fantastic video to end 2018 on, considering that the studio series has been the most predominant line that movie fans have ever seen. Let's get into my ranking. Taking the 23rd spot on my ranking of studio series figures is the Transformers Dark of the Moon Voyager class Toys R Us exclusive Thundercracker. The reasoning behind why this figure is ranked so low on my list is because the studio series strive to give us the most accurate representation of characters from the entirety of the movie verse. Thundercracker was a character that never ever appeared in the live action Transformers movie so therefore he is completely inaccurate and doesn't even deserve to be in the studio series line. Despite the figure sharing the fantastic mold of of Nitro from The Last Night. This figure is completely inaccurate. It may be a very nice representation of what Thundercracker could look like in the movie verse. However, seeing as he never appeared in any of the movies, this figure takes last spot on my ranking video. Taking the 22nd spot on my ranking video is the Transformers Studio Series Deluxe Class KSI Century. The reasoning behind why I have ranked this figure so low is because this is a direct repaint and slight retool of the Transformers Deluxe Class Stinger. This is also a character that didn't do much in the Age of Extinction movie and if they were to have released this figure I definitely think that it should have been released back when Age of Extinction was first released in cinemas. Considering that this figure is a mere repaint of another new mold that just shows how little Hasbro and Takara really think of this character and hence why I believe it to be one of the worst figures in the studio series toy line. It also has a completely inaccurate vehicle mode. The Bagani Hyra was only used by Stinger in the Age of Extinction movie so the entirety of the body mold is just completely inaccurate and as I stated in the Thundercracker segment the studio series strives to give us the most accurate representation of the characters and considering that this is just a mere repaint this figure is completely inaccurate. Taking the 21st spot is the Transformers Studio Series Deluxe Class Dropkick from the brand new Bumblebee movie. Now this is a brand new figure, it was only released about a month ago and it is still one of the worst Studio Series figures releases. Despite me being quite positive in my review of this figure, there is no denying that this figure is completely inaccurate. Upon seeing the movie, this colour scheme is just completely wrong. Dropkick was a triple changer in the movie and he did actually use his vehicle mode more than he used his helicopter mode. So I definitely think that the vehicle mode should have been Hasbro's priority in releasing a Dropkick figure. For the first Decepticon to be released for this movie, I expected a lot, lot more from this figure. Only redeeming factors are the accurate looking helicopter mode and the fairly nice head sculpt. Other than that, the robot mode is completely inaccurate and I really wished Hasbro and Takara had just waited until they could have perhaps engineered a triple changer of this character or as I stated, released his vehicle all mode first. Another reason why this figure is ranked so lowly on my list is because the scale is completely wrong with this figure. The Studio Series also aims to give us the most accurate representation in terms of scale and considering that Dropkick is essentially an attack chopper he should not be smaller than the barricade who is just a normal sized Celine police car. Hasbro completely dropped the ball on this character and considering that Dropkick is such a predominant and probably one of the best Decepticons we've ever had in the movie verse he definitely deserved a better representation in figure form. Taking the 20th spot on my list is the Transformers Studio Series Decepticon Stinger from Age of Extinction. Despite this being probably one of the most highly anticipated in the first wave of Transformers Studio Series figures I was considerably let down by this figure. In alt mode, the figure does not roll whatsoever. I have transformed it multiple times and due to the rack on his back, he cannot roll freely whatsoever. Considering the Bogani Hyra was one of the fastest cars in the entirety of Age of Extinction, I at least expected Hasbro and Takara to engineer the figure to roll smoothly. The robot mode is created out of this extremely thin and fragile plastic and as a result of this, I have had considerable amounts of stress marks on this figure and the plastic quality is just completely rubbish. The ball joints are terrible as well they seem to be wearing away every time I move the figure around which is completely unacceptable for a figure that costs over 20 pounds I also think some of the engineering in the figure is considerably lazy I really don't like how the wheels fold into the chest and now visible in the robot mode Stinger was an extremely sleek and elegant character in the movie I know that his transformation wasn't practical but I definitely think they could have done something different with the wheels as you can see from his CG render here the CGI model is extremely pristine and there is essentially no vehicle mode kibble on him whatsoever so the hiding of the wheels I don't think would have been as difficult as made out to be they could have folded them up even more and collapsed the head down overall this was just a completely unsatisfying and real letdown of a figure taking the 19th spot on my list is the studio series deluxe class shadow raider from age of extinction now personally I actually quite like this figure I really like the overall color scheme and I really am quite a fan 
of the mold that it's based on. However, considering I'm ranking these figures on being accurate to what we see in the movie, this figure had to be ranked at this spot. This is quite an inaccurate figure. The Shadow Raider character is supposedly meant to be one of Lockdown's minions that we see on his ship, and despite this having a fairly faithful head sculpt to what we see in the movie, the overall colour scheme and the body mold is completely wrong. Hasbro have essentially just released this as an accessory pack for the Studio Series Lockdown as the gun and head sculpt are compatible with that figure. They've tried to give you reasoning into buying this figure, repainting it and naming it a different character. However, I would have much preferred it if they would have just relabeled this as Lockdown and released this in a future wave. As essentially, this is an extremely well done Lockdown figure and gives us a fantastic head sculpt and a really, really nice weapon accessory. Taking the 18th spot on my Studio Series ranking is the Transformers San Diego Comic Con Retro Rock Garage Bumblebee. This is a figure that should never have been incorporated into the Studio Series line. As you can see, it is numbered as figure 19, and considering that this is a San Diego Comic Con exclusive, I think Hasbro have really done their fans over in labelling it for collectors who like to collect every single figure. This saw an extremely limited quantity release at the San Diego Comic Con booth, making it probably one of the most rarest Studio Series figures to date. Also, is one of the most inaccurate Studio Series figures, considering the paint scheme is based on nothing that we've ever seen in any of the movies whatsoever. My only reasoning behind why they released this figure in this set is because of the exclusive exclusive cassette tapes that it comes with that I never collected. I did actually buy this figure loose, I bought it as it is now with the packaging and the seller had already sold off the cassette. Seeing as I am a completionist, I had to eventually get it and considering the price was so low as it no longer had the cassette, I had to pick it up. But overall, I would not recommend this to any casual Transformer fan and for those who are diehard collectors and are collecting all the numbered Studio Series figures, I really do feel sorry for you as this has no place in your collection whatsoever. Taking the 17th spot on my list, this was an extremely hard choice for me to make as the remaining 17 figures that I have are all very accurate to what we see in the movie. However, the Studio Series Bumblebee from the brand new Transformers Bumblebee movie is the most inaccurate figure I have remaining in the remainder of figures that I have yet to rank. This figure, despite having a fairly faithful alt mode and fairly faithful representation in the robot mode, is inaccurate simply due to the fact that he has the car door wings that we do not see this Transformers Bumblebee version of Bumblebee having in the movie. The majority of the merchandise dice that was released for the Bumblebee movie do have these door wings so I do imagine that it was probably an early concept design that was scrapped at last minute after Hasbro and Takara had made the studio series figures and the remaining of the Bumblebee movie figures. As you can see the CG render of Bumblebee also had the door wings and even the movie masterpiece figure which is supposed to be the most accurate representation of Bumblebee also has the door wings so I don't necessarily blame Takara Tomi or Hasbro for producing the figure with the door wings as I do imagine it probably was a concept that was scrapped extremely last minute, leaving the Hasbro and Takara no time to re-engineer the figures that they had already created. Overall, as a whole, I do really enjoy this figure, but as I stated, it's not as accurate as I necessarily think it could be, but as I stated, that is not Hasbro and Takara's fault. Taking the 16th spot on my list is the Studio Series Transformers 2007 Voyager Class Starscream. Now, this was a fantastic figure to be released as part of the Studio Series line. It is by far one of the most accurate representations we've ever had for a movie Starscream. The robot mode and the vehicle mode are just completely accurate to what we see in the movie and the transformation whilst it borrows from the previous Dark of the Moon Deluxe class figure is extremely enjoyable to do. It's not too complex nor too simple and it has the right amount of complexity to keep you at it for a few minutes however not enough to make you want to throw the figure against the wall. The only reason why this figure is ranked so lowly is because as this is based on the Transformers 2007 movie it doesn't have the Cybertronian tattoos that we got in later movies. Despite the lower ranking this does not detract from the overall quality of the figure and the Wave 4 release that we got for his Voyager class figure will be higher ranked on this list just simply due to the fact that it has the Cybertronian tattoos. Taking the 15th spot on my list is the Transformers Studio Series World War 2 Bumblebee. This is a brand new figure and was only released about a week ago and I have put up a review since then. This figure is a fantastic addition to the collection and when it was announced I was extremely thrilled that Hasbro had actually released this figure as soon as they did considering that the Transformers 5 movie only released last year. Year, I did think that Hasbro would focus their attention on the first four movies as opposed to the movie that was just released a little over a year ago. The World War II Bumblebee is an extremely unique addition to the collection as it is completely different from any other Bumblebee figure we've ever gotten in the past. Consider
considering it is based on his World War II aesthetic, gone of the child-friendly yellow colour scheme that we are used to, and here welcome is the new dark green war-torn look that we see Bumblebee attire in the fifth movie. The only reason why this figure is ranked slightly lower than the other figures is due to its completely inaccurate vehicle mode. However, I do probably believe that, that is down to licensing agreements and down to practicality issues, as I really doubt that they could have made that vehicle mode transform into the faithful representation robot mode that we see in front of us now. Another drawback that this figure has is that it has got a lot of vehicle mode kibble on its back. As you can see, the entirety of the vehicle mode does just fold up into this very nicely tight and packed backpack, but it does sit slightly too out for my liking, and I don't like how these massive front sections just hang out on the back. I do wish that they would have added a hinge here so that you could have folded this over, hence making for a slightly more slender leg design. But nonetheless, the World War II Bumblebee is definitely a very warm welcome addition to the Studio Series collection, and I really hope that we get a World War II hot rod to go along with this awesome figure. Taking the full team spot on my list is the Transformers 2007 Deluxe Class Ratchet from the first movie. Similarly to the first movie Starscream, the only reason why this figure is ranked slightly lower on my list is due to the fact that I'm not a massive fan of this colour scheme, and I do prefer the colour scheme that came with the Dark of the Moon release. Despite that, this is probably the most accurate representation that we've ever had of Ratchet from any of the live action Transformers movies. The robot mode is extremely slender in design and I really do enjoy the transformation despite taking elements from a previous Dark of the Moon figure. The vehicle mode is very accurate to what we see in the original three movies. And the only real downside I have to this figure was the rack that was hanging out on his back. I have just removed it by simply unscrewing it and pulling it out, but you will see the rack on the Dark of the Moon release as I've decided to leave it on that figure. So overall, this was a very nice addition to the Transformers collection and was fantastic for completionists who wanted a first movie ratchet color scheme. The 13th spot has to go to the Studio Series Dark of the Moon Crowbar figure. Crowbar was a figure that I wanted so badly in the Dark of the Moon toy line. They only ever released Crankcase and I remember so wanting the complete set of Decepticon dreads from the movie. And here Hasbro have finally answered my plea and have given us another dread to go along with our Dark of the Moon collection. This being Crowbar. Crowbar was one of the most predominant of the dreads despite them not having the most screen time. He was one of the dreads that faced off against Ironhide and Sideswipe in the fantastic Mexican style off sequence and the fantastic highway chase sequence that we were first introduced to him in. I think the robot mode is fantastic and whilst it does borrow some slight elements from the previous Last Night Deluxe Class Berserker figure, he does definitely present himself as a brand new mold. I think the head sculpt is fantastic. I really like how they've done the dreads as I do think originally they would be very impractical to do as they're so long and I didn't know how they would manage to store them in the vehicle mode. Whilst their storage in vehicle mode is not the best, it's definitely not as worse as it could be and I do think that this figure is extremely enjoyable and fun to mess around with and it's great to finally have some more Decepticon characters from the Dark of the Moon movie. Taking the 12th spot on my list is the Dark of the Moon Studio Series Deluxe Class Ratchet. As I stated when I ranked my Studio Series 04 Ratchet, the only reason why that figure was ranked so lowly was due to the colour scheme. Here Hasbro gave us my favourite colour scheme of Ratchet, his Dark of the Moon colours which was the dark green and just which I just overall thought made Ratchet look a heck of a lot better as I was never really a fan of the neon almost yellowy type of green that he attired in the first two movies. This Ratchet also comes with his signature EMP blaster, which we've never ever got a faithful representation of, no matter what version of Ratchet you picked up. So we finally, to me, have the definitive version of Ratchet. And as I stated when I ranked the first version of Ratchet, this is the best mold of Ratchet that we've ever, ever got. I highly recommend this figure. Taking the 11th spot on my list is the newly released Dark of the Moon Deluxe Class Sideswire. Yet again, this was another highly anticipated figure that I was waiting for. I really hope that Hasbro did deliver on giving us the most accurate definitive version of Sideswipe and they definitely did with this figure. Upon my review I sang this figure's praises extremely highly and for good reasoning too. This is by far the most accurate representation we've ever got for Sideswipe in figure form. I love the fact that he comes with his blades as well as his two blasters from the Dark of the Moon movie and I really did like the vehicle mode for Dark of the Moon the convertible without the roof. I did think that was a superior look than the version that we got in Revenge of the Fallen. Sideswipe was a fairly rememberable character in the second and third movie and I really wish that we had gotten this figure sooner as up until now we never really got a definitive version of Sideswipe. I love the paint scheme that they've given this figure. The majority of this figure is painted in this really nice silver metallic paint which unlike some Sideswipe figures that were unpainted at all this definitely does further amplify the sculpt and make it warrant even more the 11th spot on my list. 
taking the 10th spot on my list is the first release we ever got for the Studio Series figures, the 1977 Camaro Bumblebee. When this figure was announced, I was extremely pleased that they'd gone with this version of Bumblebee, as I never ever picked up that original 1977 variant of Bumblebee that we got in the 2007 toy line. And dare I say that this is the most accurate representation we've ever got for a deluxe class Bumblebee. I do think that the engineering on this figure is absolutely superb, and this figure really does right the wrongs with the majority of previous Bumblebee releases. Despite this figure getting several repaints and re-releases for good cause as well as this is a really good mould, I do think that this first version is definitely one of the more superior variants just as it is fairly accurate to what we see in the movie. They have since announced that they are doing a clunk of Bumblebee with more battle damage and paint applications which personally for me should have been the variant that we got in the first release as we never really see a clean version of Bumblebee in the five live action Transformers movies. But nevertheless, I really enjoy this Bumblebee mold and as I stated, it is probably one of the best deluxe class Bumblebee figures to date. Taking the ninth spot on my list is the newly released deluxe class barricade from the 2007 Transformers movie. The reason why this figure is ranked so highly on my list is due to the simple fact that this is probably the best representation we've ever got for barricade in the entirety of the 11 years of the Transformers movie franchise. This figure is almost as good as the significantly pricier MPM barricade and dare I say that Hasbro and Takara have actually just taken the movie masterpiece figure and watered it down considerably to fit it into a deluxe class figure. Upon reviewing this figure I did actually say that if you have the choice between this version and the movie masterpiece figure to go with this version and that was simply due to the fact that I think the engineering and the price point for this figure is just fantastic and there really is no means to pick up that movie masterpiece figure if you are collecting the Studio Series line as this is by far the most definitive representation of Barricade that we've ever got in the deluxe class format. Taking the 8th spot on my list is the Revenge of the Fallen Voyager class Starscream. As I stated when I ranked the first version of Starscream, the only reason why that figure didn't get a higher rating was due to the simple fact that I much prefer this colour scheme for Starscream. This figure mould is probably the most accurate and definitive representation of Starscream that we've ever got. I do still think that the leader class version is the best, but for price point and availability, this figure is definitely not one to miss out on. The addition of the Cybertronian tattoos to me further amplifies the sculpt, making it one of the most definitive representations of the movie first Starscream. Taking the seventh spot on my list is the Studio Series Deluxe Class Jazz. Finally, we have a brand new Jazz figure after eight years since the Human Alliance version. This figure really delivered on a lot of my expectations in the fact that he was a lot smaller than the Human Alliance version and that it was probably one of the most accurate representations of Jazz that we will ever ever get. This figure is absolutely fantastic, much like with Sideswipe I love the metallic paint applications that they've given the figure so that it isn't just a bland grey. The head sculpt is amazing, the proportions are fantastic as well as the weapon accessory. The transformation whilst fairly simple is definitely complex enough to keep you interested and hence giving you a, a really accurate representation in both the robot mode and the vehicle mode. My only downside to the figure is the fact that it has this massive backpack I do wish that perhaps they'd added like a hinge joint here so that you could swivel this entire piece around hence having this bumper section up by his head like the CGI model but that is just a nitpick and for a figure that is in the deluxe class format this figure blows away the majority of deluxe class figures taking the sixth spot on my list is the age of extinction deluxe class lockdown Finally, four years after Lockdown's debut in Age of Extinction, we have one of the most accurate representations that we've ever got for a Lockdown figure. So accurate that Hasbro and Takara even re-released this figure in the third wave of figures as Shadow Raider. This figure completely blew away his predecessor, that extremely lackluster 2014 release of Lockdown, and gave us the definitive Lockdown that we should have got from the very beginning. The colour scheme was correct, the robot mode proportions were correct, the head sculpt was fantastic, the accessories were really good, the transformation too was fantastic and the vehicle mode was amazing. This is one of the best deluxe class figures that I've ever picked up. This lockdown figure is the most enjoyable one that I've ever collected as well. I think the articulation is fantastic, the details are just phenomenal and for the price point it is just a fantastic figure. I highly recommend that you pick up this lockdown. Taking the fifth spot on my list is the Voyager class Decepticon Brawl from the first movie. Brawl was one of my most favourite character designs from that original movie and he was in a fantastic sequence. 
when the majority of the Autobots were trying to take him down and he was just so relentless in the fact that it took multiple blows to pull this bad Decepticon down. I think that this is a fantastic rendition of the character. The robot mode proportions are just brilliant. I think the transformation too is rather complex, but not too complex that you will end up giving up on the figure. The tank mode too is really fun, and it's great that we're finally getting some more militaristic type of Transformers given an accurate depiction from what they look like in the movie. My only drawback to the figure was the fact that this turret section does, does just hang down. I did think that the older leader class figure did a better job in disclosing this with having it swing round and become a turret. Perhaps if they added some joints here to shrink it, I definitely think that that would have made this figure higher ranked on my list. But as it is, this is a fantastic addition to the Studio Series toy line. Taking the fifth spot on my list is the Transformers Revenge of the Fallen Voyager Class Optimus Prime. This figure completely blew away my expectation. When this figure was first announced at New York Toy Fair, I thought that it looked horrible. But then in-hand images started to surface of the figure and I actually began to really, really like it. Upon picking the figure up for myself, I quickly realized that this was probably one of the most definitive representations that we've ever got for a Voyager class Optimus Prime. It definitely doesn't beat the movie masterpiece figure, nor the original leader class Revenge of the Fallen figure, but for a Voyager, this figure is fantastic. The articulation is brilliant, the accessories are really nice, the overall accuracy in the robot mode is one of the best that we've ever got for a Voyager, and the transformation is genius. It is completely different than any other movie verse Optimus Prime, and despite the truck mode being the weaker of the mode, the truck mode is still a really nice representation of the Peterbilt semi-truck that we saw Optimus obtain in the first three movies. This was a very welcome addition to the collection, and I highly recommend that you pick this figure up. Taking the fourth spot on my list is the absolute fantastic Voyager class Revenge of the Fallen Megatron. This is no doubt the most accurate representation that we've ever got for a movie Megatron in the entire movie line. This beats any Megatron that has ever come before it, and for a Voyager class figure, it is fantastic. It completely annihilates the original Revenge of the Fallen Leader class and the original Revenge of the Fallen Voyager class figure that we got. Accuracies in the robot mode are just fantastic. The scale is perfect. It's a really beefy, very bulky Voyager class figure. The transformation too is extremely enjoyable. The articulation too is really, really nice, and I think the head sculpt is phenomenal. If you haven't guessed already, I highly recommend this Revenge of the Fallen Megatron figure. Taking the third spot on my list is this Transformers Voyager class Ironhide. Finally, we have a fantastic representation of movie Ironhide. So much so that this is actually better than the movie masterpiece version of an Ironhide, which claims to be the most definitive version. This figure is considerably cheaper than that figure and is just marginally a lot more enjoyable. The robot mode is probably one of the best representations we've ever got for any character in the movie verse. The only downside to it is that bumper section. However, that has never really been a major drawback for me. This figure is just completely packed with detail. The articulation is fantastic and the head sculpt is brilliant. The transformation too is very enjoyable and smooth and isn't too hard, making the transition from robot to vehicle mode extremely enjoyable. The vehicle mode too is extremely accurate and overall this is just a really nice Voyager class figure. The plastic quality too is one of the best that we've gotten in years and this figure is just a tremendous addition to my collection. Taking the runner-up spot is the Studio Series Leader Class Grimlock. This figure is absolutely fantastic. The paint applications are just brilliant. It almost looks like a customized piece and definitely not a figure that you'd expect from Hasbro and Takara. Robot mode is probably one of the most accurate figures that we've ever got in the entire movie toy line. It is a completely dead ringer for that movie CGI render that we got for Grimlock in the movie. The transformation too is very intricate and despite not being that complex, definitely does get the job done. The T-Rex mode is fantastic as well. It does have some slight drawbacks, hence why I have picked up the upgrade kit for it. But, but even without the upgrade kit, I would have still ranked this figure as runner-up, just due to the fact of the accuracy and the fantastic sculpting. This blew away any Grimlock movie figure that we got before it, and I imagine it will blow away any movie Grimlock figure that we get after it, unless they release a movie masterpiece version of this character. Now, of course that means taking the first spot on my list is the leader class Blackout. Finally, Hasbro listens to the fans to give us an accurate depiction of Blackout from the first movie. This figure took 11 years to produce and I never ever thought that we would ever see Blackout in action form again from Hasbro nor Sakura Tomy. When this figure was first leaked, I initially thought that it was perhaps a test prototype from many years ago or a third party release but then we got official confirmation and I was just completely blown away. The 
accuracy in the robot mode completely destroys the Voyager class figure that we got in 2007. The transformation is almost masterpiece grade and the helicopter mode is massive and really does evoke that aesthetic that we saw in the movie. Whilst the articulation is not the best, Blackout was not necessarily the most agile of characters in the movie. He did just tend to stomp around and zap things and destroy them and the overall shelf presence that this figure has definitely does evoke the personality that we saw in the movie. For a figure that took almost 11 years to be released, I can definitely say that this leader class blackout was worth the wait. So there you have it, my 2018 Transformers Studio Series ranking video. This is more than likely to be my last video of 2018 and what a video to go out on. The Studio Series has been a fantastic toy line for movie collectors and we have got this many figures since April so I cannot wait to see how many figures I will obtain at the end of next year. I know we've got some fantastic releases coming out such as Studio Series Jetfire, The Dark of the Moon Megatron, a brand new Optimus Prime and of course the Voyager class Bone Crusher and not to forget the Studio Series Devastator. I've got reviews coming up of the Voyager class Bone Crusher and Optimus Prime very very soon and the Leader class assortment will definitely be reviewed within the first week of 2019. I hope that you enjoyed this video and I also hope that you've enjoyed my reviews throughout this year as the Studio Series has definitely been the pinnacle for my channel and it's definitely really helped my channel in order to grow. I hope that you enjoyed this video and if you did please let me know down in the comment section below. Also let me know your ranking of the Studio Series figures, I would definitely be extremely interested to see what your top picks for this line were and also what your bottom picks were. Thanks for watching.